Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy. And uh, it's almost midnight here in Florida, and I decided to do something dangerous. You all know how Iggy forgets things and stutters and can't remember anything. So this might be a little dangerous uh, since I'm tired. Uh, I'm more prone to do those things. But I thought I would just jump right in and see what happens. And I'd like to talk to you about Airfix um, HO scale uh, figurines. And it's kind of weird when you're talking about HO scale in Great Britain because HO scale is 187, which if you're a Rocco mini tank collector, you'll know is quite a bit smaller than the vehicles that Airfix produced in so-called HO scale. Um, the Airfix packaging all says on it H-O-O-O. And I think the O-O scale is 176. And they list the HO in England as being 172 as opposed to the actual HO scale, which is 187. Now, I know that's kind of confusing and I don't want to really get too much into that because uh, I might lose some of you uh, going droning on and on about HO scale. Anyway, these figures are like 176. And um, as you can see, these packages are kind of old. And they're not as old as I thought they were. I purchased them from a... Um, estate sale and I guess uh, you know that the husband died and the wife is like oh, I don't want this crap and so she busies herself by getting rid of all of it and uh, I have a friend that's a coca-cola bottle collector and one of his nightmares is having his wife and daughter uh, throw out all his coke bottles when some of them are, are worth a great deal of money because they're very rare. Uh, he has Coca-Cola bottles dating way back and also from places that, you know, just don't even make Coca-Cola bottles anymore. I think the only place you can get Coca-Cola bottles is from Mexico. Anyway, I'm Diggy is straying again, so it's, it's hard to keep me on track. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, um estate sale. And so I bought these uh, from that and I thought they were pretty old. And But they are old in the sense that they predate UPC codes. And I believe that UPC codes were entered into effect in 1976. Uh, these packages that you see here are 1974. They're actually dated but they're old enough that they're still the figures are still made in England. Now, let's say you bought some of these things and you were wondering how old they were. Now, the oldest package I have is this one here. And then of course the most recent one I think is these up here. And I have a book that will explain how you can identify these things by their packages. So this is the oldest one I have right here, Japanese infantry. And if you look on the side, you'll see that it has in air fixes uh, highlighted with uh, black, with uh, it has white lettering. And you see here, that's this one here, the second tier. And it says here the second tier is from 1966 to 1971. So this package could be anywhere between those uh, five years. Okay. Then the next one I have in age is this one here. Of World War One French troops, and if you look at this, uh, this is 
tier two. So this one is 1966 to 1971. So same time frame it looks like. And then, no, excuse me, it's third tier. So that would be 1972 to 1974. And then, of course, the last being this one here, uh, being 1974. Now, this one here, uh, Airfix started producing these smaller figures in 1959 they started off with the queen's guards and uh they expanded each year they would add new sets so let's take this by the way this book is called air fixes little soldiers by jean christophe carbonel carbonel i don't know he's a french dude and the i i think the book is translated or he might uh write in English too, I don't know. So let's go back in time to our Japanese figures. And it's interesting to see how the artwork changes. It evolves uh, as the years go by. Now I had, uh, in 1964, I made a mural for school and I called it the invasion of Iwo Jima, uh, even though I didn't have black sand, and I had a whole bunch of palm trees. So it, my idea of uh, Iwo Jima was more like uh, Saipan or Tarawa. But, you know, when you're a little kid, you don't, you don't know stuff like that. Uh, let's see. I'm almost there. Uh, Iggy always forgets to mark the pages. Okay, here we go. Now, the first box of Japanese, I remember looking like this, the ones I bought. And uh, you can see it has a little bit more primitive artwork than this box here, which came later. And if you look at, let me move this light so that, let's see there, there we go. Sorry. They look pretty sinister, don't they? And when you compare that to... Let's take this French guys over here. He's very handsome, and it looks like he's wearing mascara. And they look very heroic and handsome, as opposed to crazed psychopath spent upon murder and mayhem. So I think it's interesting. Uh, the English, they still have a problem with, Jap well, maybe not so much now, but for a long time after World War II, they had, sorry about getting my fingers in the way there, my old tripod got smashed, and now I have this really funky looking one that doesn't work very well. Um but I want to show you some of the figures because last time I showed you my Airfix, I didn't show any figures. I just kept them in the box. Uh, but these figures of the World War I French are very well done. It's some of their better figures, I think. Um, when they first came out and were reviewed by model magazines, they said that these were a hit, that they did a good job with these. So let's take them out. And uh, I'll show you some of the poses that I think are really cool. Um, oh, by the way, when I bought these, I asked the guy, are all the figures in the box? And he said to me, how the hell should I know? You think I can spend time? He was really rude. He said, do you, you think I have time to count them? Oh, look, he's broken. See, that's the hazards of storage. Everything gets hot and then it breaks so that sucks but they got some really neat poses in here for instance they have a guy here let me see if i can get the light on here better guys i'm not doing too good you can tell it's late because i'm struggling but we're going to carry on that's what it's about guys carrying on can you see that without all the shadow and all the... 
Oh my God. Didn't think it would be this difficult. Uh, he's got a telescope. And I thought that's kind of a unique pose. Uh, I wouldn't want to be on top of the trench with that. <laughs> they did have something called a trench periscope, which would keep your body safe because you would sit in the trench and you would look over the trench with a, a box that had several mirrors. And it would reflect the image down to the lower mirror and you'd be able to see. Now here's... um. On this, some of these figures are still on the sprue, but here's one of the bicycle riders, and I thought that that's a cool pose. I like that. Uh, you already seen what can happen when the plastic gets weirded out. Here's a guy; he's dressed up in bandages. Why is the light so weird here? Let me put this down for a moment. Let's see if I can get the light on here better. I'm starting to mumble like Popeye again. Okay, uh, let's see. I was going to show you this, but the light was poor. So there's the wounded guy. He looks like the mummy. Arr! Why were everyone afraid of the mummy when he walked so slow? I always thought that was weird. He would just stand there, he would sit there and stare. You know what was disappointing about the mummy for me is that you hardly saw the mummy. He's like in that first scene, and then after that, you saw Boris Karloff, who looked like he uh, turned into a piece of beef jerky, or one of those women that smoke and drink and hang out at the pool. Now, this pose here is highly unlikely. Uh, if you carried this into combat, you would have been shot first. Uh, during the Civil War, they used to carry their flags into combat, and those guys had a very short life expectancy. And a lot of those battle uh, flags would come back and they would be all shot up. Literally a rag on a pole. Um, this is a dead guy. Either that or he's thumbing a ride. Uber, over here. Now this is a very unusual pose, perhaps not for World War One, but interesting that they included it. You see that? He's got like a basket and he's holding a carrier pigeon. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool that they would uh, give a shout out to our little pigeon friends. And uh, here's a guy. I'm not sure if he's been shot or he's just running. That's just the way he's running. What else we got here? There's also a very unlikely pose here. Uh, that's a good way to get shot by a sniper. Uh, you would, and when you're in the front line, you would not want to wear anything that would uh, readily identify you as an officer because a sniper is going to cut off the head of the snake first. So that's kind of an unlikely pose. It has a lot of the traditional poses that we come to expect with soldiers, such as the hand grenade thrower and the rifleman firing over the uh, sandbag wall. We got guy firing into the trench. Can you guys see that? It looks kind of out of focus to me. Anyway, the, these are pretty cool poses. I think they did a good job with this set. You know, it's nitpicky when I say things like, oh, well, um, he would get shot if he had a kepi on his head instead of a helmet. You know, those are minor things. I sometimes forget what I sound like when I'm doing these videos. <laughs> well, well, yeah. You kids stay off my lawn. I'm a nitpicker. Uh, I saw a guy with a shovel, and I thought that was kind of a neat pose. Where did he go? These things all look the same when they're here, like a pile of ants. Oh, that's funny. I don't see it now. They had some figures that were holding shovels, which was very common. Like, um, a shovel was an important part of being in the uh, front lines, the stormtroopers or, or Sturmtruppen, they would, uh, or Sturmabteilung, 
they would uh, carry shovels with them. And not just an entrenching tool, they would have like a long-handled shovel that they would wear uh, their collar. Oh, God, I can't, it's, I'm tired. Uh, you know, the collar loop. They would have the... <laughs> They would have the, the shovel connected to a little leather thing that they would put on their collar. Not their collar, their shoulder strap. Uh, brain is shut off about three hours ago. But uh, so if you're looking to find out how old something, you know how you know you go to a toy show or something and they say, oh, this is from the 1960s. And you look at it and you go, well, yeah, this does look like... When I first saw it, I thought, well, this is probably from the early 60s. And it's not. It's from the early 70s. And what helped me identify that was this book that I showed you over here. So there's a lot of uh, guide For every kind of soldier, there's a guidebook that you can buy that help you identify things and uh, see where they're made. And I love the artwork on these. You can see the uh, artwork changes. Like here's an early sample of French Foreign Legion. And then here's another one. And there's Africa Corps. So the Africa Corps artwork changed quite a bit. Uh, from this with the window. But I personally like the window so that you can see what you're getting. And then to this here, and then finally to this uh, more realistic uh, illustration. Now this thing here, see this? This actually comes with the Africa core, and it's a piece of crap. I don't know even why they made that. It's stupid, it irritates me. Anyway guys, I can tell my sugar's low because I'm complaining about everything. Okay, I wanted to show you the soldiers because I, I didn't, with the Airfix Germans and British that I got for Christmas, I never showed you what the actual figures looked like. So there you go. There's um, some World War I French. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you today or tonight. Well, actually, it's the next day already. Nope, I got four minutes, and then it's the next day. So there we got Airfix uh, 1966 to 1974. All right, guys. Try and pick up one of these books if you're an Airfix collector, because it also has competitors of Airfix in here, too. Um, let me come back here. And they'll have, like, uh, what is this? MPC? Who makes these? MPC. Let me get my hand out of there. What's with the hand? Gotta hand it to me. It has, like, Atlantic and other companies that... Uh, Picked up the Airfix molds when Airfix went under, when they went bankrupt. Anyway, that's it for me, Iggy. Thanks for joining the Iggy Army. Thanks for getting Iggy with it. And I'll see you guys next time with a new video, perhaps about Star Wars. Okay, guys. Take care. Good night.